Welcome back then to the Intel Extreme Masters Global Finals for Season 3. I'm joined here by Stuart Saw, otherwise known as Tossbot. Toss, how are you doing today? Doing very good, Joe. I'm glad to see that after you spilt your Thousand Island dressing down your shirt, you put on another one. For any of you that may have missed it, guys. Can't tell anyone about that. Joe had a little accident in between matches. I wasn't going to mention it, but I decided I couldn't not. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so onto the match at hand. It's going to be EG versus Alternate. We've just seen Alternate, of course, on stage. Um, we've not seen EG in action yet, though. No, we've not. We've only been following their results online. And I think from uh, their perspective, uh, for this tournament, they would really be liking a win here against Alternate. They have lost their opening games, and this now is a must win for them. Yeah, they're, they're already with one win, one loss, same as Crackland, kind of in that third, fourth slot. And obviously, the way that the qualification from the groups work is the top one goes straight into the playoffs. Two and three then have to play off against two or three from the other group as well. So you have to hit that top three. And of course, it's second is usually an easy game than if you finish third. And the other factor is we made Fox are sitting there in fifth place at the moment in that group, still yet to play EG or Crack Clan. And they're capable of, uh, of a big upset against either of those two sides. They had the misfortune of probably going up against the top two in that group, Fnatic and Alternate, first. But they could come back. Yeah, we've had some results that may be a little bit shocking. Uh, ATS, Mirror, uh, they actually drew with SK in the group stage. So that's a really, really interesting result. And again, SK not getting off to the greatest of starts in their group stage. Uh, they've won one, they've drawn one. Obviously, they've not lost, but when you look at the rest of the teams in there, MTW, surprisingly enough, are three and zero. Uh, MYM are two and zero. So those two really leading the pack, and maybe that third place can be challenged by ATS. Could be. I don't think they're going to, though. Um, I'm not a fan of ATS from, from the results in the EU. I didn't think they were strong enough, uh, and I think that they'll get found out. Somehow I can see SK or it was someone else slipping through ahead of them. Okay then, so let's get on to this match at hand. Of course, Alternate versus EG, what's your opinions on this game? Alternate, of course, in form, they've got the crowd behind them, and of course, just playing with such flair and confidence right now, individually, they're all on the top of their game, and that makes it very difficult for an EG side who still on the comeback trail from CGS and carrying these huge reputations that must affect them in some way until they get back on top form when they start to help them. Okay, then, so let's bring the teams onto the stage. First of all, it will be the Germans on the home soil here, and it will be alternate, of course. First man up is none other than Roman R. Oh, solid player, had a great round in the uh, last game on train. Yeah, I think Roman R has been a star player for uh, alternate this weekend. They're very consistent. Another man that was a star player in that train game was, of course, Pan, 20 years old, and again, had some crucial moments in that last game. Then, of course, we have a prox. Today, he's not wearing his hat, though, by the way. And he's uh, 21 years old and certainly will be called into action in this game. Then we have Moon, who, again, was using that AWP on the defensive side of train, and that's where a lot of their rounds came from. Then, finally, we have the star man, really, of the team. It is, of course, Roman, 22 years old, returning to the attacks lineup. And he made a big difference for them, not just today, but also for the last four days. You know, the biggest thing that Sig said the other day when they were going to play MTW was that MTW had players who regularly could get two, three frags at any moment. We're starting to see that from alternate. They're starting to get any one of them, any different round, two or three frags each, particularly the Romans, Pan, and Aprox. And, well, that's nearly all the team. They really are showing that they're clutch players when they need to be. Yeah, so let's see who their challenges are in this group stage game. They've already won and lost a game in the group stage. It will, of course, be Team EG. First man up onto the stage, looking very proud, is Storm. And uh, tell us what you've had some experience with these guys when you watch them playing in the CGS as well. So, second man up on stage, almost trips over. It's Haynes, 21 years old, from the United States. Then, third on stage is going to be Warden. Number one, we'll have to see how true that's going to ring through. And then we have one of, the, uh, one of the stars, really, of the team. It's going to be, of course, nothing coming from the old EG team, sticking in here and slotting into this all-star lineup. Then it is going to be the star himself. The AWP player from EG is, of course, Frod. So what do you think to this EG lineup? It's full of stars. Does that mean it's full of pressure? 
it's full of pressure, but it's full of class. You can't look at that lineup and not and say there's a bad player because there simply isn't. They're all top players. They just need to get that, I guess, confidence. Confidence in 1.6 once again, and they'll be uh, right back up at the top. Yeah, they certainly will be. And when we come back, we're going to sit down with Fraud and uh, Sega from Alternate. We're going to have a chat about this game, about the group stage, and how the pressure's building on them. So don't go anywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Intel Extreme Masters, we're just before a big game between EG and Alternate Attacks, and I'm joined here in our interview lounge by Frod and Siga, and we'll kick it off with you, Frod. This is your first major international 1.6 event since the CGS, since the uh, departure from Complexity. A lot to talk about. First of all, how are you finding being back in 1.6? I find it really well. This is uh, our home, pretty much, and we really enjoy this game and the competition that comes with it, and we're just really excited to be back in the swing of both playing and against playing against the, the best teams in the world. And we definitely want to make a name for ourselves again like we did. Is there a big difference from 1.6 to Source? I know it may sound like a silly question, but is it easy to just go from one to another, or does, does things uh, impact upon it? Um, there's a lot of things that impact that. It has a lot to do with um, like team morale, team chemistry, the way you uh, do strats mid-round, the way you adjust to rotations and kills. That It's a slight difference in Source. So. Those are the things that we're trying to work on and get better. And it's not easy to transition, but we were, we were really hardcore 1.6 players back in the day. So since our motivation has gone nowhere but up, uh, changing back has been really well because we're able to continue on what we did three or four years ago without essentially having any sort of stop, even though we were playing Source for about a year and a half. And what are your thoughts on the CGS's demise? Was it inevitable in the way they were doing things, or did you think it could have carried on in some way, shape, or form? Um, it's a tough question, but I think from, from the get-go, they didn't do it all right, and they didn't have the gamers in mind first, which is what, you know, companies that want to, you know, um, progress esports as a whole, as a big company, need to do. And, you know, they kind of dug their own grave with, without putting any attention to the gamers. Now, one guy who did have his heart set on you guys was Jason Lake, and no longer behind you saying, you know, kick the tires, start the fires, was he was famous for... What, do you, what are you going to miss without having him behind you? What am I going to what? Miss uh, most about not having Nothing him. Nothing, really. I mean, to us, we just want to focus on our team, which is the five players on the squad. The manager is the manager. He does whatever he needs to do. And we're just very grateful to have a new home that we're respected and well taken care of. And basically, we're put in a position where we just focus on Counter-Strike and focus on improving. And that's exactly what EG has provided us. And are you suggesting that perhaps that wasn't going to be possible in complexity? No, not at all. It's just uh, funding wasn't there. A lot of factors weren't in place that uh, COO wasn't the best option for us. And we weighed out our options and we talked to Jason and he knew that this was going to happen because of the lack of uh, sponsors and everything. So, I mean, who knows, but at least right now we're very content with EG and we have no place of going anywhere. Sig, on to you. So far, Anyone who comes your way, you're quite happy to uh, show them the alternate way of doing things. We made Fox in the last one, took you down to the last round. Let's start there. How difficult was it to finally get over the finishing line? Well, it was, it was very, very difficult to, came, to come back in the game. And, um, well, at least um, we got uh, four rounds left and we all have to score those four rounds. And we made it finally because of um, players like Pan and Roman R with amazing skills aiming skills in these rounds and that's what a good team needs um, well it was like the tactical way didn't work out like we wanted it so um, yeah we focused on um, the aiming skills and it worked out finally now next up is EG another uh, d different play style to what you've been rehearsing against in the Europeans what do you how much do you know of EG and what do you perhaps fear of them well, um, we know that um, Danny has great AV AWP skills, and um, we know they play a solid game. But, um, well, the team is not known so far in, in um, CS 1.6, so I'm not sure about how their game style is. Like, is it team-based or more on um, the, the player skills? And for your guys, you know, we say this almost every, every time we get you on the sofa, still, 
There were no expectations for attacks. People still think at some point you're going to falter, and yet you continue to prove them wrong. In the World Finals, is it going to be a case of the same in the European Finals that you end up against MTW? Or do you think some of those teams that you've already played could come back and cause you problems? Yeah, well, I think MTW and MYM will cause problems again. And uh, lastly for this, are you going to take this one or can EG stop you? Well, I, I, I just can give um, EG a hint, a little hint. Um, if you want to win, you should take 16 rounds before the last round because the last round is ours. Oh, ho, ho, a bit of smack talk coming there. Well, that's it. When we come back in just a moment, we're going to let these guys do their talking on the server. Well, that's always interesting to hear from the managers before the game. Um, it's probably right, though. Let's be fair. We've seen alternate on stage, what, five, six, seven times now, and probably four of them have been 16-14. That last game, uh, you know, great comeback by We Made Fox, but obviously they were just too strong in the end. And I think that could be the situation here. I mean, I really favor alternate in this game. Yes, I think their reputation now is in front of them rather than behind them. They are building this alternate name game by game and they're becoming much much stronger uh, as it goes on their experience is growing and you've got to suggest that they are uh, going to do very well in not only this but in the tournament as a whole from EG's perspective I thought there were some interesting comments there from Frod I really do you know uh, particularly when you say you know, what's the uh, impact of not having the manager behind you none, none. didn't didn't even have to think about that one so Interesting stuff, but EG have got their game plan. EG you know what they've got to do. It's just making sure they can do it. Yeah, I think that, that was a really oh. almost weird comment from Fraud, actually. Uh, because, I, uh, you know, when they were in complacency back in 1.6, they always said uh, publicly, you know, we, we love having Jason there. He does everything for us. And uh, when he stood behind us, he motivates us to win, things like that. And that comment kind of just reversed all of that. But he did then go on to uh, make the politically correct comment at the end to say that, you know, it's not to say that things weren't uh, going to happen in CML, but that EG was the better place to be. And it was interesting. It seemed to me, though, that most of the argument was happening between Lake and, uh, and Garfield, but the two owners of those two big brands, because, of course, prior to that, they were the best of friends. I think in the CGS season one, yeah. Alex had uh, some form of a role with the uh, complexity side under Jason Lake. And for him to then come back and, uh, and well, in Jason Lake's words, be a traitor to him, then that's where most of the headlines were made in those comments. But it can't have, uh, it can't have been easy on the players to hear all of that as well. Yeah, certainly not. I mean, it doesn't really fill you full of confidence and it's always a hard thing to kind of swallow. Actually, we are going to get straight into the ninth round. The map is going to be Inferno. How do you think this map's going to impact on the game and how it goes? Alternate have played so much Inferno over the last few days. In fact, well, everyone's played so much Inferno over the last few maps when it comes to the stage matches. It seems to be all we're playing at the moment. I think we've had one dust two and two trains, but everything else, uh, two nukes, everything else has been Inferno. Uh, I think it'll be very open, very even game. We've seen a lot of games which have just swung to and fro one team to another, regardless of whether they were T or CT. So certainly uh, could, could go either way, but I favor alternate. At the moment it is alternate are doing well in this ninth round. And actually only fraud could answer with one frag. Uh, well, nothing says LOL. So uh, I didn't really go the way EG wanted it to. And this is their first game against one of the real cream teams of Europe. I mean, they've played Crack Clan, who, you know, are kind of a fringe team, in my opinion. They're not up there with the greats. Of course, alternate yesterday, uh, or before this tournament, you wouldn't have said they were one of the greats either. Uh, but actually, after, after yesterday and the day before's performance, and of course, finishing second in the European finals, then I think that's changed in a lot of people's minds. I think you see there where cultures have changed in during those two CGS years. Now, it, for the European teams, they bond together before every match. It's not been seen from the Americans. It never was something new to them. Personally, though, Joe, I'm looking forward to seeing nothing in action. This is probably going to be one of the first major tournaments I've seen him in action at. I think he's a young gun who could 
really over the coming years go on to live up to the reputations that some of his teammates have got. Yeah, he's really a fantastic player. I saw him in uh, LA. Yeah, it'd be LA in Montreal. Um, and, you know, he's really kind of all out and aggressive. He can play that really aggressive role. He can sit back and hold. He's got great aim and his positioning's always really good. He just seems to be like a really raw talent that's coming through. Um, and I think playing alongside people like Warden, like Storm, like Frod, will help him out so much. That was always the debate. The Americans had the aim, the Europeans had the strategy some years ago. Is that still the case? Well, we're about to find out. I was about to say complexity. And Evil Geniuses versus Alternate is live on the Pistol Round. Joe, take us away. Yep, to give you a quick rundown of the teams in case you uh, weren't joining us when we went through the players on the stage. For EG, it's Warden, Storm, Haynes, Nottingham, Fraud. And for Alternate, it is Pan, Roman, Art, Prox, Roman, and Moon. Warden actually killed himself there. Um, As did EG. Not sure what happened. I guess we're going to get a restart if they can. Well, I'm not sure. They, they seem to be playing on. I mean, ah, there we go. Now we'll get a restart. Yeah. Interesting. They were take playing two. like it was serious there. Yeah, take two of the pistol round. This is still group stage, so pretty much anything is possible. We can have a draw. If we if we get to 15-15, of course. And we will play all 30 rounds of the match as well, because obviously in the group stage, the games and the places can be decided by that round difference when you come to the end of it. At the moment, EG on the attack here on Inferno. Crawled their way up towards the middle. We'll continue to push around here. They've spotted someone off to the left-hand side. And uh, actually, Storm will just jump across, get himself into the safety behind that wall. And, well, EG now backing away up towards apartments. And I think this is maybe a little bit too slow for them now on that netted side. Alternate have obviously rotated the men around that they need. The good thing for EG is that they're keeping things fairly quiet. So... A rotation could come in fairly unnoticed, although Roman is going to be peeking here at the end of the banana. He will call that in. Alternate are going to rotate back around, but EG will push straight into this banana bomb site. There is one man here running down towards the back. Storm will look to chase him down. And it was uh, actually a prox there. Moon comes in with a frag onto Haynes. Still, Storm hasn't got a bomb down. Finally, he will do. Roman's down to 6 HP. Roman R will get the frag onto nothing. Flash is going over the top as well. We see Warden in the back of the side. will catch a grenade from Pan. And here come Alternate. They take down everyone. And the Germans pick up the pistol round. Great retake of that banana site. Yeah, very great work from the German side there. But the, my question is, from EG's perspective, what did they actually achieve? They ran a long way around to the right, doubled back, had the bomb side at their mercy and yet didn't get a single frag. Got the bomb down money in the bank, but the fact they didn't get a single frag there was criminal. Yeah, that was that was really quite tough from EG. I mean, they never really saw anyone. They got into the site and uh, it, it, the man that was there, Prox, actually just backed away. Just ran straight back into CT spawn and waited for his uh, teammates to come in. And uh, I think that really helped them out. And of course, from there it was looked quite easy. I mean, there was no real challenge put up by EG in that situation. No, I agree with you. And now we're set with Roman R opening up the fragging. Roman picks up one. Pan and Moon spread the love. And alternate. Get the next round. The Germans are off to a flying start. Yeah, great stuff from Pan there. He was actually up on the, uh, on the balcony, as you saw, and switching up to his USP. He did a lot of damage at the end. And still... We have no frags from EG. They are on that harder T side. We'll be looking for, you know, around about five, six rounds. We'll be happy with, but of course, the more that they, uh, well, they take into that second half, the happier they will be. Flashes will go up into apartments, and Stormies will be boosted up there as well. I can hear the M4 sounding off. EG actually have gone 
for this third round by a grenade will land just in front of spawn flashes coming in the counter flashes join them nothing will get one fraud comes around as well moon has gone down roman r has gone down all to the hands of fraud and now this bomb is planted it's two versus five and surely alternate will save it looks that way very very good round from eg they huffed and they puffed and they Blew the alternate defense down over on that uh, covered site. Really good work from them. Great entry from nothing with that first frag. And then Frod followed it up with two. And after that point, it was round EG. Alternates Roman and Aprox weren't in a position to retake that site. And could work by them. And there's the confidence they need. And I feel that EG, one big win against one big European team, could bring them all the way back to their uh, vintage days. That certainly kind of rings true, and I think it's hard uh, for a team from America to kind of get back into the scene. Just, you know, the pure fact that they're not playing against the best teams in the world because they're not from America. You know, the, the best teams in the world are in Europe or in Asia, or in, in MIBR's case, South America, and just not in the US. There's not, one, like, you know, one world class team there anymore. So I think they'll find it hard without having, like, a big boot camp in Europe for a month or so does make it very difficult for them. The American scene is still recovering from the demise of the CGS. And things like this from Aprox come as a bit of a surprise. Warden down, but nothing chimes in with two. Good work from him as he now will lead that assault for EG. They charge down the carpeted walkway. Pan retreats all the way back. Alternate are calling a rotation to get into the covered site where Romans will make their way in. Fraud gets himself a big frag. Roman R is in the thick of things there. Gets himself a one before the other Roman will go down. It's all on Roman R now. Deagle in hand. Gets forward. He's got three to aim at. He can't seem to convict, convict onto any one of them. And in the end, nothing. Gets himself his third frag of the round. Good work from him. EG tied up at 2-2. Two -two. Yeah, well played again by EG. There they swarmed that site fairly quickly. Roman Art recovered for a split second, but with three men jumping over balcony straight at him, and it was a case of just firing off that deagle and hoping that it hit three heads with three shots. And that was the only way he was going to come out of that situation with anything but being dead. And at the moment, Haynes just watching up on the sniper tower. Moon and a prox open up straight away in the round. Moon is looking down middle. A prox is looking down banana, and those two positions covered here completely by alternate and the good thing about that awp you can cover a huge area for instance this banana so hard to get up there when you've got an awp firing down at your storm will though pick off a prox and that's bad news for alternate of course they will now rotate back around flashes and smokes down to cover the arch storm takes down roman r that was inside the middle and actually the bombs being collected here by eg and i think they're gonna go for the netted site instead, they've backed around and Moon's going to rotate back towards his position over by that netted site. And EG have to get in there quickly. They have to get this bomb in position because they're losing men. Warden and Storm go down. Great play by Moon who got into the position fast and made it count where it really was needed. Pan was there as well. Weird position for Pan to just be waiting in there. Uh, but Haynes will go down as well. So, again, great round from alternate. It seems like one team has a great round, then it's just flip reversed. Well, EG were in control there. They're in a three-on-three, -three, and they were rotating across. Now, in that kind of a situation, you've got to do it quickly. If you don't do it quickly, it get that kind of a problem. But had they run quickly, they would have found themselves actually in a three-on-one, and then another three-on-one. But they slowed down and pace cost them there. Uh, so, work still to be done, and, uh, but as a result of these rounds going tit for tat, EG have been able to buy, and, well, partially at least, we've got some AKs and Deagles out, as Haynes will lead that assault for them. Nothing is uh, the only man who's not gone inside here, and here we go. Quickly, EG will push out. Interestingly, they send the Deagle first as Haynes now waits to make his assault. Nades out, adds to the smoke, adds to the carnage. EG now ready to rock and roll as they 
Make that push out right now. Here they go. Warden opens up the fragging. Roman comes back with one as they dart on through. Storm in. Frog dies. Must have fallen. Pan gets himself two before Haynes comes in. Haynes is the only man up for them. He'll at least get the bomb in. As uh, he sits waiting, the two alternate players are on the wrong side of the map. They're not, well, they're on the wrong side of the bomb site. He could have planted it. And he's walking out of there. This is either going to be very, very good or very, very silly from Haynes. And in the end, I think it's going to be the latter. Try and explain that one to me, Joe. I think you probably know better than I do what was going on there because I didn't really understand it myself. I mean, Haynes should have planted that straight away. You know that it was just waiting uh, in case someone came around, but there was n you know, nothing from there. He should have gone for that early plant two on one. The best thing you can do in that situation is get the bomb down. Or, if you're going to commit to coming out of there, run the hell out of there. I wasn't sure on the clock. Run the hell out of there and go on to the next site if it's possible. But do something. Well, the thing is, if you plant the bomb, You've, as well as taking the cash from it, you also get the opportunity to, you know, dictate the pace because then alternate really have to come at you. They have to get him back into that side to get a defuse. EG now are on the save again after losing those last rounds. Roman R will pick up loss here. We'll finish it off actually with a uh, USP. Was that an ace? One, two, three, four. No, Moon stole his thunder again. Now let me put something to you. If I were on, if I were fraud, for example and I were playing alternate, or I were playing MTW, or I were playing anyone who two years ago was not very good, I'd be so frustrated. Because when I was playing this game two years ago, I was schooling them all. Because you know, we were complexity, we were the best team in the world. How much, at some point, will that play in their mind that they used to be so good at this and they just can't, not quite there yet? Yeah, it must be quite annoying just for the fact that, you know, Complexity were playing against Alternate back in 2006. Uh, you know, uh, WSVG stops, they were there, and Alternate actually got into the finals of that event as well. So, you know, it must be quite annoying. Alternate at the moment are bunched up and they've taken a grenade. That'll do a fair bit of damage to the team as a whole. Frod will pick off one, but here come Alternate dropping Warden, dropping Frod. Nothing is still around. What is he able to pull from it? He's actually a lone ranger for Team EG. Smoke will pop and he will have to navigate around it. Then we'll get the kill out onto Moon, but Aprox was watching there as well. An alternate had that bomb on lockdown. They did, they're playing very well. They lead by six rounds to two. And after that first few rounds, that, you know, that the first four rounds where we we're going one each way, things are starting to even out a bit for alternate now. As they get some consistency, their complexity opponents try to come up the banana walkway, and Pan says no. Nothing in fraud, though, don't oblige. Get themselves too, but the double orc power of Moon and Aprox pick themselves up the frags of Nothing and Warden, and it leaves fraud and Storm left on their own. Two versus two, though. Roman and Moon, the only two left up for alternate here. And Moon is the man who's going to get himself some action once again with an excellent frag onto Fraud. Now it leaves just Storm to, to carry the flag for EG. Roman will push around from behind. Storm with the bomb, with a minute and ten. He can do this. But it's going to take... Again, well, it's going to take him winning this game of chess. Nades across Aww. and Moon with an excellent orb. Great play, Moon. Three frags that round and duly applauded by the crowd. That was just textbook from Moon, flash straight, fra you know, flash straight around. All he did was turn around in that situation, then Moon obviously just followed in and shot him in the back of the head. So, great play again from Alton. They are seven rounds to two up. We still have six to go, which of course means one of these teams could still get a lot in a row. And for EG, if it went to alternate, and that will be very, very bad news. But as we've seen so many times on Inferno this event, that... You can't count any scoreline out. It's doable on both sides. And that's what makes the map so great to watch. At the moment, EG are on a save and actually pushing up that carpeted hallway. They've got one man in front moving around. And uh, of course, with a deagle, 
famed for his deagle. He's a very, very skilled deagle player. And actually, here come Alternate. And Frog must have got a couple of hits off there onto Roman R, but again, the weaponry just far superior. It's a given round. And well, he's 8 2 with 5 to go. 5 to go. Great stuff, Alternate Attacks. They really look like a team who are uh, in the top of their game. And EG, well, they're not quite there yet. They are on, I think, a good... Oh, no. They are on a buy. Rushing down this right side, firing off a few shots as they go. Starting to push through this. Slow, diligent build-up play from EG. There's no one from alternate that they can hit at the moment. They're all slightly further back, but EG weren't to know that, and it's been cleared out as the boost comes in. Sound like someone got hit there. Yeah, Warden's down to 81. That was just straight through the wall, and EG have to be careful of that because they have been pushing that boost a good few times. We're going to watch... Frod with his AWP. Frog's Just got his favorite weapon back, his toy. But Pan has a toy of his own. His name's an M4, and he's got himself two big frags. Now it makes it all on Storm to do as he pushes out, gets two frags of his own. Good work from Storm. He's kept this round alive. Frog can't get in on this, and that's the problem. When you warp in that situation, it's a big, big problem. Pan wins the round for alternate. And the question I ask is, Frog, if you're going to go up the carpeted hallways, and then out onto that balcony is orping the best decision there because he found he had a ranged weapon and he was being shot at close range. Yeah, certainly it's not ideal. I mean, you can use it to effect, I mean, down towards the library if you aim down there, but if there's no one there, there's no one there. If they're in pit underneath you, then you've got no choice but to drop down and just hope that you can hit them first time close range. Quite similar to what Moon did yesterday on train when he was up and down a ladder in burst fire that with a, uh, with a Glock. So the score is nine rounds to two. Really impressive half the alternate are having here on CT side. Warden will peek around. EG not ready to push just yet. They keep jumping up onto the ladder to avoid those AWPs. And you can see that EG are giving respect to the fact now that those two orps are in play. And they've slowed right down. They have been very, very careful not to push out and be picked off by those AWPs. We've uh, lost Joe's PC there, and unfortunately mine's got the late trail TV bug, so apologies for what you can see on the left of your screen, but we quickly switch around following a prox. As uh, the nades come in, it looks like EG have gone onto that second site, and they make their way through. A prox and Roman pick up the frags. Fraud gets himself one in as well. Moon back at the double. Alternate recover here as they look to make their way into that site. There is still fraud. Oh, point blank range. Orb can't follow it up with the deagle, though. And alternate get themselves another round. And that takes us to 10 2 going into the halftime interval with three rounds left to play. There is not much uh, at the moment, not much hope for EG. They find themselves in, in well, just a situation where alternate have got an answer for every attack. If you come down the right, if you go down the left, try going through the middle, split, rotate. We've seen five different types of attacks from EG, and each one has been met by the same answer. They've got the entry frag here, though. Nothing on the moon with his deagle. Could this be enough? A prox answers up with one of his own. Doesn't look like it's going to be so easy. Comes in now as Moon applauds the shot that took him down. Very nice shot, he says. That's one thing you've got to love about these alternate guys. They are... Really, really great guys. Pan, HG, downs one. Roman Art claims himself that second frag onto Haynes. Alternate now, just two frags missing from this one, and they'll complete the set of EG players. Who's left up for them? It's Storm and Fraud, and they're both in difficult positions. Storm will make his way in with the Deagle. Coming out from the office area, there's a whole army of Alternate players waiting to take him on. Out he goes. And in a moment, down he goes. Roman R opens up with one. Pan finishes off the second. Alternate don't just look good. They look brilliant. Yep, they look fantastic at the moment. 11 rounds to two. 
And apologies for the uh, for the numbers on the screen. It is a bug. It's not possible to take it off at the moment. We'll just have to reconnect. So, just looking at the scoreboard, Roman hardly been involved with this game. He's on five and four. So teammate Pan leading the way. 18 kills, four deaths. But look at Warden. One for 12. Haynes is two for 12. And that's just simply not good enough, Toss. You need you need to be killing people if you're even thinking about getting up, gonna win a game like this. No Franks, no win. It's a true story. Aprox with a double. He's showing how it's done. Makes it a triple before going down to uh, nothing there from Balcony. Nothing continues to grenade out. He's the last man left. And it's looking like the score is going to move to 12-2. Nades thrown onto that site to prepare. Well, they thought nothing was going in for the uh, bomb plant, and that's why those grenades are out. But now nothing will go for that bomb plant. It will get the bomb down. There's a smoke actually covering in on the site. Moon could really do with hitting him. Shots come in. Roman's down to 43. One on two. This is doing. Uh, this is doable for nothing. But certainly very, very hard. He's hidden. It's behind one of those boxes, they have to move it quickly. He's actually flashed up now, I think. That flash did drop in front of him. He is going to go in here. Does get two kills. The last one through the box. Superb play by Nothing, and he wins another round for his team. Well, when I say another round, it's only the third. It's not going to be enough if they carry on this way. We have one more round to go in this first half. Because then they will switch teams and EG. Whatever happens, have a long way to come back in this game, whether it's 11-4 or 12-3. It's still a long way away. Frod is going to fall down the banana. This is where Frod really needs to shine. He needs to get these frags and open up the scoring for EG. From with that AWP is lined up on the banana. There's nobody there for him at the moment. This is, of course, the last round of the half. There is so much on it. For EG, one round difference may seem insignificant on paper, but it really will decide how much there is left in this one. An alternate have gone walkies, right as Frod finds the frag onto a prox. May open things up for EG as they come on in down the banana walk and charge in towards that site. But beware behind as there are soon to be Germans on their backsides. Warden finds the frag onto Roman. EG up by two. Moon comes in with a big frag. Great work from him. Alternate continue to push in. Roman will make his way up the banana. Here comes that assault from them as they continue to charge on in. Moon oh. double HG! That changes everything! They lose Roman R, but Pan gets the frag. Warden's got just three points of health. The bomb ticks away and he's not going to be able to change things. Alternate pick up a big round. They go into the half leading by 12 rounds to three and they've been excellent. That will be half time, 12 3, big scoreline. I think it's doable. I mean, For I hate alternate, to say that yes. because the alternate, you know, the last game they were miles in front and then it came back to 16 14. I think, of, uh, you know, of all the teams, I don't think that EG are that capable of coming back into this game as it is now. I mean, from what I've seen of them, they've not been all that strong. No, I think, you know what, from. Uh, for a team with those names and those reputations, we've not seen something worthy of them yet. Now, there will be a time of EG playing and getting back and moving towards the level. But if you look at it, there's a big difference. Two years they weren't playing this game whilst everybody else was taking steps ahead of them. You can't come back instantly, and I think they're finding it the hard way, finding that out the hard way. Yeah, they certainly are. I mean, they are being, you know, almost schooled by alternate here. They've taken a lot of rounds. The rounds that they have picked up maybe were uh, very, very close and could have gone either way. But we can uh, sit here and guess at what they're thinking and what they uh, are going to do next. Or we could just throw it over to James because he's with Frod. Yes, I'm on stage with Frod from Team EG and Frod Disappointing halftime score? Uh, yeah, it's a little disappointing. I mean, we uh, had a bunch of rounds that we should have won and should have ran away with the momentum on some uh, occasions. But, you know, that's what we had the next half for. We're going to try and do our best and hopefully get a W. So what kind of mistakes? I mean, if you were to say, like, a couple of things that really went wrong and turned the game in favor of alternate, what were they? I mean, where did it turn bad for you? 
Um, I think we got a bunch of picks really early in the round, and we couldn't really capitalize on that. They uh, over-rotated really fast, and we could have gone to the other bomb site. maybe. It's a questionable call, but they were really quick on the rotates, and uh, maybe they could have explored that a little bit better. Do you feel that playing the German team on stage, that they've played five times, you've just flown in from America, you're kind of fighting an uphill struggle? Uh, not at all. I mean, this is really even, and I mean, they're a great team, and it's a very CT-sided map, so... We're going to try and do our best uh, on the defensive side, but they're a very good team, and they definitely have uh, improved a lot. Uh, do you think you're slightly better on CT on Inferno than T? Yeah, I'd say we're a lot better on CT side. T side Inferno is a little bit challenging when you, uh, you know, are caught in a bunch of different situations, and especially when they're running around with a, a bunch of ops in different locations, it kind of makes it a little bit difficult, but now it's our turn to do that. Well, we'll see if you can do it. So there we have it, Joe. He says they're better on CT. What do you think? Back to you in the commentary booth. Well, I think the fact is that they have to be stronger on CT. Otherwise, it's going to be game over very, very quickly. Um, just a quick score update for you. We have um, games going on at the moment. Mirror versus MIBR. Mirror win 20 rounds to 10. That's really their first, or oh, sorry to say, second big victory on land. They beat MYM at the Global Challenge in Dubai. Um, what other scores do we have here? Let's see. Fnatic 21, Crack Clan 9, MTWDK 19, Gravitas 11. So that's not such a huge score there against Gravitas. They can, I think, be proud of that one. And we also have Gravitas versus MIBR live right now. And the score of that one doesn't want to be known because it's taking too long to load. Ah, there we go. 5 0 to MIBR. Yeah, very. Uh very interesting scores. Lots of things in this uh, tournament starting to take shape now, and we're about to find out as we have the best around in the second half going live. Alternate versus EG. Joe, why don't you do the honors? The score is 12 3, as we said. And well, a long way back here for the Americans. Roman Art at the moment moving slowly up carpeted. Well, EG not going to expose their positions. This is one thing that uh, EG have decided to do. Rather than going aggressive, sit back and let Alternate do the work and come to them. As you can see, Spawn is actually peeking down carpeted hallways. And should Alternate push up there, they're going to get hit. And, uh, Alternate at the moment aren't moving whatsoever. They're just hanging right back. They will not push too aggressive. We'll watch uh, Storm here. He's actually surprised by Roman R. And Alternate are going to burst straight into this uh, netted bombsite. They have flashes and smokes coming over. Pan will get the headshot onto Frod. It's already down to a five versus three. Pan is working his way around the back. And will continue to push his way around. He gets in behind him. He's going to catch Haynes completely unaware. Warden will sit back and get the frag though. But still only two members to go. Roman gets one frag. Grenade rolls in. The last man standing is nothing. He goes for the knife. But doesn't come out on top. And well, that is of course pistol round. Alternate go up to 13 rounds to the three of EG. And well, from there, it's hard to see where EG are going to come back because now Alternate have money, they're going to have weapons, and they should take two more rounds. That'll put them up at 50. And very hard to come back when you lose the best round on CT in particular because it's more expensive. And that being the case, EG on what looks to be a Deagle round for them will be uh, well, needing to pull something out of the bag. Fraud fires the first shot across the bow of his opponent, but alternate taking things slow. Pan gets himself the frag onto Haynes. EG already a man down. Now Frog misses his first shot onto Roman, and Roman doesn't give him a second. AK headshot says goodnight, and alternate continue to go from strength to strength here. Roman R's been sighted, but he just walks on out, and he and Aprox deal with two of the Americans, and now it's all on one man. That is nothing, and he is on the complete other side of the map. It makes it all very, very difficult for him. And well, they took a well, what could only be described as a miniaturized gamble by buying up on that one, and it didn't pay off. And in fact, they didn't get a frag, and they've got one frag in the first two rounds. 
Yep, they are going to go for AK's third round. They don't want this to go to that match point. They want to try and stop it at 14 rounds and then come all the way back into it. Well, that means this round is super, super crucial for them because if they lose it, they can basically say game over after this one. So they'll uh, go back to no money. Have to uh, save up once again. Alternate will uh, remain over the top there, doing the damage to anyone up in those cultured hallways. Roman doing the same over by the banana walkway. Roman R edges his way around. Alternate looking for those early picks. You don't want to get caught out by a stack here from EG in that middle. Area would be a place where it would happen. Moon picks off fraud. Roman R still yet to move fully into this uh, bomb site. There they go. Finally in and around. There is one man behind them. There are two men behind them. They were dealt with brilliantly there by Roman and Roman R. The crossfire setup was fantastic. Roman will help out Roman R. And well, the kills coming in left, right, and center here for alternate. Only one man is alive, and that again. He's nothing, he's only got three health points. He's gonna go down very quickly here, blinded up as the flashes come around. And well, they're gonna get the knife on him. Yes, they are. Roman R corners nothing, stabs him in the face. And well, that is alternate on game point. Yeah, this is painful for the American fans watching because alternate are so strong. EG are not their former selves and if those they, those two common ugh, those two combine for a humiliating result. Alternate now will know that they've got all the time in the world to win this one, and that, that will help them because they can see that EG are going to make this as hard as they can. They need the round points if they're to have any hope of doing anything. But losing this, this will be their third. Uh, sorry, this will be their second loss. Realistically. That could put it beyond them. They've still got to face We May Fox. That could be the decider for them. A Prox and Haynes pick up a frag each. Alton about to walk in towards the banana site. Rushing on it will be Pan. And there's one to the right. But they deal with it. Roman R downs Warden. The recovery is about to come. As Storm comes around, Haynes is there as well. Full rotation is on. And Moon downs Roman R. Haynes will. Back away. And now they'll make their assault. Storm has gone back to the covered site. But from alternate there. Taking names, taking numbers, and picking up wins. This has been a brilliant performance from alternate. They have made sure that whatever's come their way has been dispatched of in some style. Good game's called. And alternate attacks have beaten evil geniuses. And unfortunately, that was a bit of a non-event. I'm really surprised. I was, to be honest, expecting more from EG in that situation, you know. I, I guess it's just the names of the players in the team, you know. They carry so much history and kind of a legacy almost with them in American Counter-Strike history. Now they've come into this one and to put it quite plainly, they've been destroyed by Alternate, who have looked on fire the whole day, they, uh, or the whole week, should I say, and you know, with the fans cheering them on there, and it just looked too easy. It just like they were, it looked like they were playing some random team, similar to what MTW did to NYM the other day, and, uh, you know, EG just didn't show up. The following round, though, EG have gone on a go and won it by, by five frags to, to one. Unbelievably, EG have got themselves back into the... Uh, well, have got themselves around that they had no right to win. But the final whistle has been blown. We've got to play out these rounds because it's a group stage four match. So the round scores are important. But we can uh, take this opportunity to find some scores out from the other games. Gravitas MIBR is still live. MIBR lead by nine rounds to one in that one. Mirror beat MIBR by 2010 earlier on. MYM lost to SK 11.19. SK coming back. What map was that on? That could be crucial. Fnatic beat Crack Clan 21 to 9. We made Fox over X3022 8. That's We Made Fox's first win. You feel that 
EG versus We Made Fox will be the decider in this group for third place. It was on Nuke that MYM lost to SK. We saw MYM lose on Nuke earlier on in the Europeans, I think. Uh, but from your perspective, Joe, what is it that EG need to change to get back to their old ways? I think it's all to do with practice. Um, in North America at the moment, they can't get the practice, and that's kind of a, a bit of an insult, I guess, to the American teams, but, you know, it's quite plainly true. Um, the European teams are on a higher standing than the American teams, and I honestly think that if EG want their team to be a force in international Counter-Strike in the future, then they have to send them to Europe for a time or they have to get a European team to be there because they're not going to learn to play and get back to that level and get better than them. How can they if all they're doing is you know, watching their demos and seeing them play at events and playing them at events that you turn up to, but when you actually figure it out, the play style, it's already too late. Yeah, I definitely, if it fits in with their, uh, if it sits, it fits in with their schedule, say, look, before the next event, we're going to go to Sweden we're going to sit, we're going to invite MTW, we're going to invite SK, Fnatic, or whoever will come, because some of those may not want to. And for a month solid, or two, three weeks, we're going to play our asses off and make sure that we can get back to that level, because right now, they're nowhere near it. They're not. They certainly aren't, and that's kind of annoying, I guess, from all sides of this, because EG that stole this team basically from right under the nose of complexity. Um, when I say stole, in, not in the loosest terms, not literally. Um, and they were a former great team, they played in CGS, they were good there, and then they come back into 1.6, and well, it's just really hard to see them getting beat this hard against their alternate. Yeah, it does make some changes. The game has changed in those two years that they yeah. were away, and they need to catch up. At the moment, oh, okay. we have 5-1 second half score in favor of alternate. So that brings the score overall to 17 rounds to four. That unfortunately, means we've still got nine rounds to uh, sit and talk through because... Yeah, these rounds need to be finished. The problem is, obviously, everyone really wants to see the action up until 16, and that's when the game you know, really kind of hits its point. And then we uh, finish off these rounds just for the score. I mean, for alternate, it doesn't matter. They just want to win every single game, and then they don't have to care about the rounds. Yeah, and I think uh, J2 Goodharding, he's also a diehard fan. He wants to see all of these final rounds, too. He's up there with Sig, making sure that alternate picks them all up. He looks really interested at the moment. He, he looks like, surprisingly interested. I think Jay does like a bit of CS. Obviously, his uh, usual game, of course, is World of Warcraft, which is coming up tomorrow. Today's all Counter Strike, which will please you Counter Strike fans out there. So, uh, you want to stick around all day. I think later on we have SK versus MIBR. And one more game which slips my memory at the moment. So it's all on the uh, schedule. If you go to tv.esl.eu, I know some of you guys are probably watching on different sites out there, and uh, thank you for that. Hope you're enjoying it, having fun. For the just, for we're just uh, actually reading a news post there on esl-world.net. There's a lot of news um, about you know, kind of current things going on. When you see a pause in a game, there's usually a news post on the same why there's going to be a pause. Um, apparently, Fnatic X3O had um, had a drop. Yeah, there's internet problems here. Because oh yeah, the DDoS. The in yeah, we had a, a DDoS attack apparently on the internet, and well, that kind of sucks. Prize money for this tournament. Counter-Strike 1.6, first place would take away 50,000 US dollars, second 25, third 15, fourth 10. In WoW, it's 30, 15, 9. So it all sort of works out that in that top three, you get either 10 per person, 5 per person, or 3 per person. It's big money up for grabs here, no matter what your position is. And a you know, big credit and a big thank you to the ESL and their sponsors for making this uh, Intel Extreme Masters possible. They've put on a real show for us, and they are flying the flag for esports right now. They certainly are. I mean, 
you look at the whole setup here we've got, and most of it is dedicated to esports. Some yeah. to, you know, just general gaming, but that's great as well. That's gaming, right? I mean, CBIT is one of the biggest trade shows in Europe every year, and there is an entire hall dedicated to esports. There are something like 30 halls here at CBIT, and most people have got, you know, one or, or you know, a stand in a hall. Esports and the Intel Extreme Masters have got a hall named after it. This is true. Pretty impressive. And that. To take a quick look at the uh, the other games that are going on right now. If we uh, just refresh, read more and see uh, what was going on there. What are the surprise results of the day for you? I mean, SK Mirror drawing, uh, that's quite a surprising one, I guess. MIBR picking up 12 rounds in a match. That's a surprise for me. Yeah, 12, 12 rounds to two. Seeing that MIBR have lost to Mirror, they've lost both of their uh, initial games. They're now destroying Gravitas. And that game will, of course, be important if MIBR wants to go through. EG have picked up a couple of rounds here, actually. May be able to put a few more together. We've got five to go. The score is 19 rounds to six in favor, of course, of alternate. And, you know, alternate are the only German team here. Last, yeah, last season's winners, Mav Sports, of course, were knocked out in the European finals. They finished fifth in their group. They had to place at least fourth to have a chance of going through. And I think the alternate are doing Mouse Sports proud here. Yeah, I'd agree with as that. As the flag carrier. That's uh, certainly the case here. They are doing what other people probably couldn't do um, in terms of you know, making sure that no one can get anywhere near them. Coming up after this, it's SK Gaming versus MTW. That'll be a great game. SK having just beaten MYM, but lot, lot of Drew with Mirror, that is confusing. And the last game of the day, MTW versus MYM, well, that's going to be great as well. So we've got two really big games coming up on stage next. Make yeah. sure you don't miss those. Really looking forward, as usual, to watching MTW. You know, MTW. Uh, just watching them always kind of just brings a smile to your face. You kind of get the aura of those five guys that's... You know, so happy and pleasant and having fun and they're, they're a really different team to what we normally see and I think uh, against SK I think they'll take the victory there MYM last time we saw them play MYM on the last game of the day they crushed them absolutely destroyed them and uh, that was on train where they won 15 rounds to zero on the CT side tomorrow on the stream CS starts at 2.30 with uh, the relegation game and then the winner bracket round one before that it's all wow. SKU, SKUS, SK Korea, and anyone who's not privileged enough to be in SK can challenge them. <laughs> well, Inner Fire, in my opinion, will uh, be challenging there big time there. A uh, game that we'll be showing tomorrow is against SK Korea, of course, the old Council of Majors team. A moment in this one, EG have just picked up another game, uh, another round. As we, uh, if you're wondering why we're not commentating this, like we say, Alternate already have won this game. And now it's just a case of deciding for the sake of statistics and maybe later on uh, for the sake of the actual round and who qualifies uh, for the round difference as well. And EG has started to put a few rounds on the board and that's to be expected really from the CT side, which is of course stronger here on Inferno. Score update from MIBR Gravitas is that MIBR are 14 rounds to two up. They are two rounds away from victory. Remember, this MIBR side has taken a pounding today. Lost 23-7 to, uh, to MYM. Lost 25-5 to MTWDK. They, are, they also lost 2010 to Mirror. This their fourth and penultimate game. They are going to get a win. Their next game, though, is against SK. And, well would surprise me if they picked one up there. MIBR are quite an, uh, almost an annoying team, you know? They have these roster changes um, quite often, and I, I don't mean the guys themselves are annoying, I mean just kind of the whole thing surrounding them. And they come to an event like this, and they've not really got started today. They've not really got off the ground. They've lost to Mirror, they've lost their other games, and they really have to win this game now. It looks like they are going to win that game, uh, but the game against SK is a must-win situation for them. For pride more than anything. Show that that great brand, that great history is 
still going to do well for them because at the moment it's not. And you know what? That's a uh, that's a big problem uh, for them right now. And you're actually speaking of that, that's a problem that EG are having. They're in a similar position to MIBR. Great name, great reputation, being torn apart. I mean, I'm reading Gottfrag at the moment, and oh my days. The uh, one comment to, to sum it out from Regulator. They're just starting to think they don't take it seriously. Like, the American squads are okay with mediocrity. Well, I don't think there's any other option. There's no um, tournaments, really, aside from the uh, continental finals that we've had and the global challenges. That's it. That's yeah. the, you know, there's no other big events around for Counter-Strike 1.6 at the moment. There's no European teams training with them. How are they expected to get better when there's no one to almost teach them what to do and to, for them to train against? Because you play the same teams in practice and you start to make the same mistakes, you fall into the same you know, bad habits. And that's what we saw in Dubai when we did the uh, Global Challenge in Dubai. Those guys play CS probably more than um, some of these professional players do. But the fact is that they play with Dubai and teams the whole time and they just do bad things and when they come up against the European teams they got schooled, they, made to, they were made to look a bit silly because they just couldn't keep up with it because they, it's, it's all internal, all internal practice within the country and they never learn new things. Yeah, I do see your point and it'll take a long time, it'll take more international tournaments for them to play it and that the, pr the problem is at the moment there aren't that many international tournaments. This is the first of the year. Previously, you would have had, well, previously you would have, go back to December, end of December, CPL winter, February, SHG Open, uh, then March, actually traditionally there would be something before the uh, IEM came along. Then you'd have your national qualifiers leading up to ESWC, CPL summer, and then, and then there were other events in between. Acon 5, back when it was that name, was also in and around that time of the year. So, and then of course, you look at it from the perspective of who do we play. The American institutions like WSVG, CGL, they're gone. GGL don't do CS 1.6 anymore. They also came, uh, came up with a few uh, international tournaments. There is a dire need from these guys' perspective to have these events. Yeah, and I think the, the tournaments in, in LA, in Montreal, really kind of opened people's eyes in the North American scene uh, once again. Because you know, the tournaments all of a sudden were there. There was something to practice for. If you've got nothing to practice for, why are you even practicing in the first place? And that's, the, I guess, the hard thing for EG. But also, at the same time, a good thing because they've got a good, you know, kind of backer and they can actually be sent to these international events, which aside from having to qualify there, their sponsors can send them. Actually, the game is indeed finished. 7-8 it finished this second half in favour of Alternate. The score overall was 20 rounds to 10. And of course, Alternate take the victory there. And it was over a, uh, a long time ago. I think 20 rounds to 10 is quite generous almost, but still, Alternate won on the harder T side. EG weren't able to do anything there and come back. Couldn't agree with you anymore. It's back to the drawing board for EG now. They can still get out of the group. They've only lost two matches. They could get through in third. Uh, should they? Be, I mean, it'll basically come down. You would expect them, I think, to beat MIBR um, on the assumption that that's the other team in that group. It's not. MIBR aren't in that group. Uh, they face, I can't remember who the fifth team are, but I think they'll beat that fifth team and I think it'll come down to their game against We Made Fox. Uh, you would expect them to beat, oh, Fnatic, they won't win that one. Yeah, the, the teams in that group are quite familiar. I mean, of course, we're at the, uh, you know, the global final stage right now, so no team you can really pick out of these groups and say, yeah, that's, that's definitely a win game for them. At the moment, the score MIBR is 14 rounds to five. Uh, against Gravitas, so they're doing a good job there. They still have, you know, quite a, a couple of more victories maybe to pick up in their group if they want to go through. But aside from that, of course, we've just seen alternate win versus EG, and to catch a word with the players, I think Moon. I can't quite see that far. Uh, it's James Harding. It is James Harding, and you can't see who I'm stood with down there, but of course, it is the one and only Moon from Alternate Atax. And Moon, a big, big win for you guys. Uh, did you expect it to go, you know, that well for you? 
No, of course we didn't expect it like that. We, we thought it would be a hard fight, like almost every match here. And uh, maybe we had some luck and uh, maybe we won some important clutch rounds and uh, they didn't have the luck at all, so it went really well for us. So, I mean, they played a good T C uh, T CT side. You played a great CT side, and that gave you such a huge advantage and confidence boost. What was the difference between, you know, their CT and your CT? Surely it wasn't all luck. Was there, you know, what tactical decisions did you make? Well, uh, first of all, we just won the pistol rounds and uh, kind of had the money advantage all the time. So I uh, guess by that, we all also won like seven, eight rounds only by money control. and. Uh, um, maybe they tried a little bit too hard to go to A and didn't try to uh, to do some tactical moves like faking or uh, um, well they just uh, tried to they just forced to to go into one spot and uh, we were just standing there waiting for them and uh, yeah their their goal wasn't good enough. You actually um, over by the A site you were stacking four people a lot, weren't you? Yeah, I was. <laughs> Well, there we go. So uh, they can't learn from that now, but maybe if they play you again. Um, going into the, the future in the tournament, you, you've won three games in a row. You're gonna, you've got two more games, x 3 and Fnatic. It, obviously, if you drop a map, someone might take first place, and Group A is very, very difficult. How important is it going to be to beat Fnatic and x 3 and considering Fnatic are playing very well today? Well, uh, of course, there's uh, this first place, and when we get the first place, uh, we avoid a relegation match, and uh, this is kind of important for us because, uh, of course, we won a lot of clutch matches, and uh, I think if we get into relegation, we really have a clutch match again, but you can't really say if you're going to win that, and uh, being in double elimination right away is uh, way, important, uh, way more important, and um, of course, uh, I think MTW is going to place first on uh, Group A, so if we, even if we win the relegation match, like being placed second, we're going to face them first in the half finals, and that, of course, uh, well, would be a really tough, uh, tough uh, opponent for us. And that's why we're heading for first place now. Yeah, they are going to be heading for first place, but they do have to overcome Fnatic and x 3 And you can check out those results on esl-world.net. So, what's up next? Well, I actually think that someone very special is going to come out. It is going to be Jonathan Fatality Wendell, and I wonder what he's going to talk about. But to bring him out on stage and everything else, it is, of course, Daniel Balala.